Hey guys, Jay here with Word of Advice TV, and in this video I would like to show you how to manually light a gas or a propane furnace that has either a spark or a hot surface igniter. So this is particularly useful in scenarios where you're troubleshooting your furnace, you narrowed it down to the igniter, you know the igniter is bad, but of course it's nighttime, it's a holiday, or it's a weekend, and you can't get that part for a few days. So to get you heat, just to get you by, you can manually light most of these furnaces just to get some heat so it runs. The downside is, after the furnace heats up and the thermostat meets its set point, once it turns off, it won't turn back on by itself. You have to keep manually relighting it like that until you get that new part in. And I realize that some of you watching are probably gonna know how to do this, but for those of you that don't, this may just save your night. So here is my faithful test subject, and we're gonna pretend that my igniter burnt out. But before we do that, let's just turn my furnace on. I have the power switch off right now, but my thermostat is calling for heat. So once I turn this on, let's just see how it looks like in a normally operating furnace, just so we can see the furnace sequence of operation. And if you want more info on the sequence of operation, I kind of break that down and explain every single piece of it in my video, furnace sequence of operation. So if you want more info, check that video out. But for now, let's just turn my power on and just see how it starts. First, the inducer motor should start, then the igniter will glow, and then you're gonna hear the gas valve click and let the gas through to light all the burners. So let's just watch all of that happen once. I'm gonna turn off one of my ring lights so we can see better. So my inducer motor turned on, pressure switch is closed, and then next up, the igniter is gonna to start to glow. Mine glows pretty quick. On some furnaces, it takes 20 or 30 seconds be before the gas valve opens. And that click you just heard, that was the gas valve opening. Let the gas through and lit all of the burners. Now, they light very quickly, but they do light one at a time, starting from the first one. So here's the gas valve. And then coming from the gas manifold, the very first burner in line, it lights that one first and then it goes boom, 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 really quickly from right to left, from the igniter to the flame sensor. Lights all the burners. And now, let's just see what it would look like if our igniter was burnt out. So I'll just unplug it. Bam, our igniter just burnt out. And this will simulate a burnt out igniter scenario. If you have a multimeter, you could double check, make sure that the igniter is bad or good. I have a video on how to check an igniter and how to replace an igniter. If you want more info on that, check that video out. So I'll turn my power switch back on. And let's see what it's going to look like now. So once again, my inducer motor came on. That closes my pressure switches. And right now, my igniter should be glowing, but it's burnt out, right? So let's see what'll happen next. Okay, turn the power switch back off. So what just happened now is the igniter did not light the gas, obviously, because I have it unplugged, or if it's burnt out, but the gas valve still opened up for a good four to five seconds. It was open, letting gas out, before it shut back off. Now, the igniter's on this side. On your furnace, it might be on either side, but usually it's on the right side. The igniter's on this side, the flame sensor's on the last burner. And the purpose of the flame sensor is to turn off the gas valve if it does not sense that there's a flame. And I do have another video that talks in detail about the function of the flame sensor, how it works, and how to troubleshoot it, the whole complete thing all about it. So if you want more info on the flame sensor, you can check that video out. But anyway, back to our gas valve. It opened up for about four seconds before coming back off. During that four seconds, that's when we can light it manually. And I don't know if you heard it in the video, but after you hear the gas valve click, you can hear the gas hissing as it goes through the orifices for about four seconds. And I just want to point out that if you don't hear your gas valve click, and open and some gas hissing out of the orifices or out of the gas manifold, most likely your problem is not the igniter. Although it could be a combination of problems where it's a bad igniter and there's something else wrong aside from the igniter. And that is about it for the long introduction. 
And now let's actually get to the main part where we light the thing manually. And to do this, the first thing you're going to need is an inspection mirror. This is optional. I like to use a bigger one for this. Uh, if you don't have a mirror, you could do it without it. It just helps to have it so you can aim the flame better. The next thing you need is some kind of a lighter. The one with the long shaft to light grills and stuff. Those lighters work the best. If you have a torch and you can actually fit it in there, a torch can work. You can use a match. I know some guys use an extendable, you know, a telescoping grabber or something, and they tape a match to it to light it. And the last method would be to use a lighter. This is the least preferred method, but that's the one that most people will actually have. So I'm going to try lighting mine with a lighter to show you an example of what that would look like. Okay, so I'm looking at the underside of one of my burners. And this is why the mirror kind of helps. If I stick my mirror further in, you can see the face of my burners, or basically the fronts of them. And the burner we're after is going to be the one that's in front of the igniter. So there's my igniter. You can kind of see it right there. So I usually just put my mirror in a place where I can see the front of my burner. Right about like that. That way when I stick my lighter in there, I actually know that my light is going to be right in front of the burner when I'm going to be lighting it. Okay, so I'm going to turn the power back on and light this thing with a lighter. And I can't give you a close-up shot because my hand is going to be in the way. So you'll just get the outside view. So let's turn the power back on. I'm looking at the front of the burner there so I know where to aim with my lighter. It has to be really close to that front burner otherwise it's not going to light it. So pretty soon here. The gas valve should be opening. Bam! It lit very smoothly. So I turned my power back off, but basically what you're trying to do is when that gas valve opens up, you want to have the light already there. So before you start trying to light it manually, what you could do first is turn the power off and then turn it on and see how long it takes for the gas valve to open. You know, if it's 30 seconds, count as you're waiting for it to open up and then reset the power again and that way you'll know when to put the flame there. So let's try it one more time. This time I'm gonna try it without the mirror and see if I can light it without seeing where I'm going. Well, I approximately know where I'm going because I looked. But let's just do it one more time. Okay, so the gas valve should be opening soon. So there you go, it lit very nicely even without the mirror. So the mirror is optional, but of course some kind of a light a flame you do have to have to light the thing. So that is how to manually light a furnace. Now not all furnaces will be nearly as friendly as mine is. I have a lot of room under my burners to work on. I could actually stick a lighter in there. Many furnaces will not give you that room, especially if you have a high efficiency furnace where the burner box is going to be up here. It'll have a door over it or a cover. You're going to have to take all the screws out, take the door off, and the burners are not going to be nearly as accessible. In that case, you're going to have to go with the match on a stick approach or a long shaft lighter to get in there to try to light it. There's no way you're going to be able to get a lighter in there. But manually lighting your furnace is very much like manually lighting a barbecue grill or even the range in your kitchen. If the burner sparker goes out, you can light it with a lighter like that. But of course, if you are still uncomfortable with doing something like that, then don't do it. Hopefully you have some alternative heat source, maybe a fireplace or a couple of electric space heaters. And I know there will be other technicians watching this that have probably done this many times before. If you have any further tips or suggestions, or you have any corrections to what I've said in this video, please let us know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to mash that like button on the way out, and we'll see you next time. And if you're still here and not in the comments section below, that likely means you don't have a problem with your igniter. I'm kidding. But hey, 
Thanksgiving just passed, and I want to ask everybody a question. What comes at the end of Thanksgiving? If you guessed dessert, you are wrong. What comes at the end of Thanksgiving is, in fact, the letter G. And if one lame dad joke was not enough, let me give you another. Why did the turkey not have dessert? Because it was stuffed.